Any day chasing bass with a fly rod is fun, but let me give you a few tips that's gonna help you catch a few more bass. To make things simple, all you have to do is look at the water you're fishing and put it into one of two categories. Does it receive a lot of angling pressure or does it not get fished much? Let's start with the pressured water first. Now chances are if it receives a lot of pressure, it comes from conventional bass anglers, guys throwing jigs and plastic worms and crankbaits and spinnerbaits and the like. And maybe that's one of you guys. Well, I'm gonna give you a tip that's gonna catch you more fish. Bass, just like about anything alive, eventually learn, well, I probably shouldn't grab that thing because it hurts. And in the meantime, what they're doing is living off of the available food source. That might be smaller bait fish, really small ones. Could be dragonfly nymphs, could be uh, damselfly nymphs or leeches. Rather small food for them. But with a fly rod, the good news is this. Well, that's exactly what a fly rod is meant to do. Land a smaller fly and make it really subtle. What you'll find in pressured water, if you take this technique, you can sometimes outfish your conventional buddy with a fly rod. Give it a try, you'll be surprised. Now let's go the other direction. Let's say you're fishing a farm pond that gets fished once a year, twice a year, something like that. Now's the time to open up the picnic basket and take out all the fun stuff. Big topwater poppers and big streamers and things that go splash in the water. What you're trying to do is get that reaction bite from a fish just sitting there. Hasn't seen something for a while. We might as well have fun with it. My favorite's topwater poppers. Nothing beats a big explosion on the surface. And then when you do hook these bass, guess what? You're in for a fight, and it's even more fun on a fly rod as well. So keep that in mind next time you're going bass fishing with a fly rod. Just imagine what the fish is thinking, whether it's pressured water or unpressured water, and adjust your technique. You'll catch a lot more bass that way. Good luck out there. So you actually get a whole host of different flies you get to cast. You can cast fun flies like this guy, a rubber-legged surface popper. Cast it out there, pop it along, pause it, pop it. And if a bass wants that, you're in for a treat. There's gonna be a big surface explosion. And even if you miss the grab, it's still really fun to do. So make sure you fish some top water poppers. Now there's a whole host of other flies you can throw at them too. Mm, big uglies with uh, bunny fur, rubber legs, some eyeballs, and there's even a small rattle in this fly. Throw it up against some structure, let it free fall, jig it around, and you'll know if there's a bass there because you'll get quite a tug on it. But often overlooked though when it comes to bass fishing are the nuts and bolts. This is the old fashioned woolly bugger right here. You cannot go wrong with the woolly bugger. Or, hey, you want to take it up a notch? This is basically a woolly bugger. It just has a bead head on it for a little more flash and a little more weight with a bit of crystal, uh, crystal chenille in there for a bit more light. Well, these are great bass catching flies right here. People often overlook these. Let's keep, it, uh, keep getting smaller here. Here's a mohair leech. Now again, most of you conventional bass anglers out there, a fly like this, in this size and shape, uh, you'd never imagine a bass would eat it. You're used to throwing big jigs and rubber, um, rubber baits and so on, and that's cool. But don't forget that bass forage often, and they will eat smaller things. There are leeches that live in reservoirs and lakes. And this fly right here mimics that leech. You can catch a lot of bass on this one. But let's go even smaller. In most lakes, there's a bug called the damselfly. It's that little blue dragonfly that flies around. And along with its bigger brother, the standard dragonfly, what I'm holding here is a nymph. It's a dragon, or what I'm holding here is a nymph. This one happens to be a damselfly nymph. Very small when you're thinking on the scale of what bass eat, but I'll let you in on a secret. Bass live on these things during the summer. You'll see even big bass chasing these things around and eating them. And if you're ever fishing highly pressured water, make sure to put on a damselfly and strip that in front of a big bass. It'll jump all over it because it knows exactly what it is. And most people forget to fish it. So next time you go bass fishing with a fly rod, keep in mind to take your fun flies like your topwater poppers, your big uglies, but don't neglect uh, the, the producers. Your woolly buggers, your bead-headed woolly buggers, your mohair leeches, and especially your dragonfly and damselfly nymphs. You'll catch a lot of bass on those.